Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a button pressing animation so that when you press the button, it will go in and back out again. And after this, you can put whatever code you like, for example, opening a door or anything along those lines. But I'll show you what this looks like now. So we can put this button anywhere in the world we want. When we press it, it's going to go in and back out like that. And we will also be playing a sound effect, but I'll add that in later on. So that is what it's going to be like. So let me show you how to do that now. So our first step is to just create our blueprint actor for this. So I'm just going to put this here, it doesn't matter too much where you put it, but you might want to organize this more. So if we right click, go to blueprint class and get an actor, and I'm just going to call this one button underscore BP, name this whatever you like, and then open that up straight away. And the first thing we're going to do in here is create our static mesh. So get a static mesh like that, and I'm also just going to call this button. And you may actually have a proper button static mesh, but for me, I'm just going to be using the default cube that you get in Unreal and then scaling this down to 0.25 and then the X 0.125 like that. And again, obviously scale this to whatever you like, have whatever mesh you like. It doesn't matter too much. This is just what I want it to be. Then I'm also going to add an arrow in here like so. Get this arrow like that. And this is just going to show us where we want this to be. So I'm going to have it facing this way like this. So this way I know that the button is going to push inwards this way where the arrow is pointing. So this is just a developer tool for us. It won't be shown in the game engine itself when you play it. Only we can see this. So it's just a helpful little tool so we know what's what. So again, I know the button's going to go in that way. And then one final thing we'll do in here is get a box collision. And this is where the player is going to be to be able to open this. So I'm just going to keep it that size and then move it to the edge of the button like so. And I think that'll be good. So again, this is where the player has to be to be able to use this button. So that looks good for me. Next, we're gonna to go to the event graph over here. We'll delete, begin overlap and event tick like so, but we're gonna keep the event we can play. Now our first step is we're going to set a few variables. So if we create two first off, we'll create a variable down here and I'm gonna call this out position. So the position the button will be in when it's out, so it's not been pressed. And this is going to be a transform variable. And then we'll get another one and call it in position like so. Again, that is also a transform. And the reason we're using transform is because we can then use location, rotation, and scale. So just in case you want to change either of those three, this just makes it a lot more accurate, a lot more precise than just using a vector, which is location. So what we're gonna do is just quickly set those off event begin play. So you can just drag and drop them onto the executable node there to set them like that. And then we're gonna right click on their return values and split the structure pin so that we can mess about with the location, rotation, and scale individually. And then down here, we're just going to get relative transform of our button static mesh there. So we get a reference to the button and then get relative transform. And again, we're going to right click and split the structure pin of that. The location will go into the location of our out, rotation and rotation, and scale is scale, like so. But then what we're going to do for the in position, so like that's the out, that's all normal. The in, we're going to come out of the location of the get relative transform and we're going to get a vector minus a vector like so. And now this is how we're going to be setting how much we want it to go in. So what we do is go to the viewport, select our button here and just move it back as much as you want. So you see I moved it back on the Y axis by 10 units. So what I'm going to do is minus 10 on the Y like so. And that is why I have this arrow here is I know it's going back on the Y axis. So that works for me. So now I'll plug that into the location there. So leave the X and Z the same, but minus 10 on the Y. Although because it is a vector minus a vector, I just put in 10, not minus 10. So make sure you do that. And then the rotation and scale can be the same, unless of course you want to change these values when you're doing this as well. And also one final thing off event begin play is we want to just enable the input like so. So just get enable input with the player controller as get player controller. And this just means that the player is actually going to be able to use this button and interact with it which is obviously what we want. So that is what the start of your code should look like. So like so. So we're just setting the out position, the in position and enabling the input. And because we're doing it this way, it means we can use this button wherever we want in the world. So I'll compile that. And next we want to create the actual interacting part. So if we scroll down, get some space and we just select our box collision up in the top left, right click on it, add event, and add on component begin overlap, do the same, add on component end overlap, the other actor we're going to cast to our third person character or just your character so it could be third first whatever you've named it do the same for both of these 
so the begin and end of up both look like that. And then we're going to get a gate, so if we again, I'll move this down a little bit more, and if I hold down G and left click, we can get a gate. The cast for the begin overlap will go and open, and the cast for the end overlap will go and close like so. And then the enter, this is what we want our interact button to be. So if we go to edit, project settings up at the top left like so, and then when it loads, we scroll down to input down here, we can create an action mapping. So I'm just gonna hit the plus there, and I'm gonna call this one interact like so, and I'm gonna set this to the E key. Now the reason we're doing this is it's just a lot better than just getting an E keyboard event as we can then add multiple different buttons in here, which is especially good if you're using different consoles or you want to create bindings later on. So we can close that and then right click in the event graph again and get our interact action event we've just made there. Come out of pressed and go into the enter of the gate like so. And so now that is the interacting part done. So now if we come out of exit of this, of the gate, this is where we're gonna put all our code. So what I'm gonna do first is play sound at location with the location obviously of get actor location. So this just allows us to interact and press the button and this will play the sound when we do that. So obviously when we walk into this box collision we made, we can enter this gate, but when we leave it, we can't enter this gate so we can't interact with the button. So the next step is we're gonna create the actual animation for this button. So our first step is to just right click and add a timeline, add a timeline like so. I'm gonna call this one button in like so and we're gonna go from play sound location out that executable into the play from start from the timeline. Make sure it's play from start, not play, as we want to make sure that we go from the very start of the animation and the timeline every time. And then we're gonna double click on this just to open it up, and we're gonna add a new float track up the top left like so. And again, I'm just gonna call this button in. The length of this is how long you want the timeline to be. So I want this to be about 0.25 seconds. So this is very quick as I'm just pushing a button. But obviously set this to whatever you like, and we right click in this gray area as this is the active timeline. Press add key to curve float. The time will be zero, value will also be zero as this is the start. Right click again, add another keyframe. The time will be the end of our timeline. So the length is 0.25. So the time on this will be 0.25 and a value of one. We press these two buttons here, zoom to fit horizontal and vertical. And this is what our timeline looks like. So it's just going to be moving the button along this timeline like so. We compile and close that, and that is that part done, very simply. So now if we drag and drop in a reference to our button, like so, drag and drop that in, and then we just set relative transform, like so, plug that into the update of this timeline there. Now what this is doing is it's just going to obviously be setting the transform of our button, which is obviously the variables we set earlier, so it's gonna be moving this every time this timeline updates. And now we want to be able to actually get the position on this timeline to move our button. So what we do is we just right click, get a LERP transform, like so. The return value is gonna go into the new transform there. The alpha will be this button in float track here on the timeline, and the A and B are gonna be our variables we made earlier. So A is gonna be get out position, plug that in there, and B is gonna be get our in position and plug that in there like so and that is it done this is that simple but that's only going in now we want it to come out as well so to do that we can just simply select all this Control c Control v move it up and then just plug out of the finished of the first timeline into the reverse from end of our second timeline which i'm just going to name button out like so and you can change the flow track name as well but it doesn't matter too much and the reason we're doing reverse from end as we want this to actually play from the very end of the animation so it goes all the way in and then it will go all the way out from that position and that is it done so i'll show you what this is doing so we're going to be able to interact with our button so this just allows us to press e to be able to use the button when we do use it it's going to play a sound and then it is going to play the animation for our button going in and then back out again so what i'm going to do is select this code here right click on it and I'm just going to collapse nodes there and I'll call this button animation like so, add an output and I'll just call this out, change it to an executable like so and move it up there like that. Then I'll comment this code here and just call this button interaction brackets push button as that is what we want it to do, as that's what it is doing and I'll select this, comment it again and I'll call this button moving animation. You obviously don't need to do this, obviously it tells you what's doing what, so it's helpful to understand. 
and then out of this here so you can come out of this I'll just get a print string I'm not going to use it it's just to show you that where, that's where the nodes go you can then comment that and this is going to be the code you want the button to execute so ie opening a door so I'm not going to do that part in this episode as this is just a general tutorial on how to use a button but this is what it would be like so you have the button interaction here the button moving animation that we made and then the code you want after that so like I say it could be another timeline for opening a door upon this button press so that is what that would look like so now obviously if we open this collapse graph here we didn't actually put a sound in this play sound here so what we can do is import that now so I have one which I got a free sound which I will link in the description below you have to make sure it is a wav.16 bit file and it just sounds like that so this might not work too great for timings obviously you can mess about with it to make it perfect for you or get your own sound so if I've got it selected I can press this little arrow here and that is now in there so this should now work so again this is what it looks like compile save and we can just drag and drop this button in on the wall as you can see here we know which way it's going to go because of this arrow here so we can then just rotate this to fit perfectly like that so now if I hit play I can walk up to it and I can hit this button it goes in and out perfectly like that and again like I said earlier you can put this wherever you like in the world and it will still work as we are setting it when we begin the game so that works perfectly so we can just press this button in and out like that and the sound actually works quite well with this timing too so I think that'll be it for this video so we've done everything we want to do we've created our button blueprint our interaction the animation for this and you also know where to put the code after this animation for you to be able to do whatever you like for example opening a door and it looks and sounds something a little like this so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one